Well, folks, welcome to one more edition of Politics and Red. I'm Egberto Willis, your host. Thank you so kindly for being a part of the show. Welcome aboard, everybody. Welcome aboard. E2247 is in the house from all over Texas. I mean, for all over the United States of America. Bridge MCP from Binghamton, Binghamton, New York, upstate New York. We also have Lee Grant, Montgomery County. We also have El Senor Bruce Pollard, Kingwood, Texas. Melanie Keelan from Barcelona, Spain. We have a AVQ from Brooklyn, New York. A vet Avery Herod from Atlanta, Georgia. How are my peeps doing today? Michael said he's feeling tired today, listening from Twitch. Michael, you've been tired for two consecutive days. What have you been doing? Are you taking care of yourself? Are you taking your vitamins, my brother? You know, uh, we need our youngsters around. We need our youngsters around. Anyway, folks, we're going to have a great show for you today. Anybody listen to the uh, to the proceedings today? I listened to most of it. I had to take about a 40 minute break to do an interview that you're going to see in a minute. But I, I went ahead and listened to it. And I, I thought that Colorado really did a poor job in representing their case as being as Trump being an existential, uh, an existential problem to the United States of America, and that the Insurrection Act did cover it. Now, I do believe, and, and you know, Katanji Brown made a very good point, and that was the idea behind the 14th Amendment, uh, I, Article 3, was not to give states more power, but to actually take power away from the states so that we wouldn't have gotten a whole lot of the the the, the, the uh, insurrectionists of the past, the the Confederates, to come back into power. And she pointed out that if, if that ruling pretty much is held up, in other words, if, if Colorado is made uh, to stand, the issue would be that one state, Colorado, would pretty much be able to uh, have an influence on the national thing. They think that is in federalism. That particular thing should be a, well, some believe that should be done on a federal level, not at the state level. So um, I think it's going down. I think it's going down nine to zero. Um, I, I don't, I, I, I listen to a whole lot of stuff on the cases, bef- um, you know, on people who spoke before that. And somehow I don't think anybody made that case, but Katanji and I think the chief justice as well, uh, and maybe Kagan made that point that, uh, you know, the idea behind the 14th Amendment was, in fact, to diminish state rights and accepting that would, in effect, give states more power. Uh, you know, so, uh, you know, I, I think I'm OK with it being taken going down now that won't be the end of it because you have people that are probably going to sue in federal court for trump to be off all ballots and that's the one that uh we have to take care of scotus handle seal lawyer harder than trump lawyer yeah i thought so as well but again uh i don't what i what i think is that the the colorado lawyer to me seemed that that uh, sounded, not seem, sounded very ill prepared with some of the answers. I mean, I am no lawyer, but uh, it seems to me like the Trump lawyer was so much better. Uh, the Trump lawyer seemed to me, uh, that, that's just my opinion, but he seems so much better than what Colorado brought to the Supreme Court. So uh, that said, I don't think that the arguments that you make in front of the judges really carry much weight. There are all these other uh, uh, submissions and stuff that they look at that I think holds a lot more weight than just these two guys or these two guys and a woman going in front of um, the Supreme Court. Anyway, I have a long, a fairly long video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start it and then we'll take it on the other side of this. So let's go ahead and get busy. Welcome to one more edition of Politics Then Right. My name is Egberto Willis, your host. Today we have a very special guest, especially in these times where these things must be considered, where they must be addressed. Ted Griffith is a 40-year communications and public affairs professional who has helped senior executives in business, government, politics, media, and nonprofits to deliver persuasive messages. As president of the Fixers Group, 
His team has managed issues in, sec- in such sectors as energy, water, and wastewater, healthcare, municipal and provincial governments, agriculture, finance, mining, and retail. There's not a place he hasn't touched. The firm is committed to bring in the art and science of persuasion to the clients in communication. Welcome to Politics on Right, uh, Ted. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, Alberto. I, thank you for having me. This is a, well, a great opportunity. Actually, look, I, I, I really, I must confess that I didn't get through the entire of your book, but I went through uh, some of the synopsis, and yeah. it is a topic that we cover here at Politics Done Right, day in and day out. And having uh, a, a a book of this nature that itemizes as it does, I think it is a it is an excellent thing. So let's go ahead and start with your entry. Why did you write the book? Well, I'd the say I was. I'd say it was pulling beforehand. Beforehand, I, I want to let folks know, and I'm sorry about this. Mm-hmm. The title of the book that uh, that Ted wrote is "Arc of Theater of Lies." Correct. The, the, the arc. We, 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 the, no theater of lies. Theater of lies. The, we live in a theater of lies, and uh, yep. isn't that true? You know, as I was doing the research on this book, because I was as a communicator, I was over the years just frustrated about how people were making decisions based on lies and information and for, you know, letting their opinions be based on lies and information. And, you know, uh, I've always, this is the book I've always wanted to write. I've written a lot over, uh, over many, many years, but I just wanted to spend some time and go, you know, and, and certainly, you know, the, the, uh, the COVID pandemic uh, informed part of this is that, you know, people were uh, deciding not to get vaccinated and um, uh, you know, and, and saying there's, you know, too much uh, personal uh, input in their lives. And but this was causing people to die. And so people were making decisions based on lies and misinformation that are actually affecting their health. And I found lots more evidence of that in the process of writing the book. And so I gave it the title Theater of Lies, because what I found is that the producers of lies and misinformation use the same tools that producers in Hollywood television and, and theater use. There's a villain. There's a problem that has to be solved. There's barriers to overcome. And the stakes keep rising and rising and rising until nobody else but me or others can can fix it. Um, and those are the, the things that, that get into our, uh, we're used to those stories and, and believing them. We go into a theater, we suspend disbelief, we enjoy the show. But it's being all around us now in how people are communicating with us and they're using those tools to Manipulate us. Now, let, let me first, uh, let's go ahead. You're in Toronto, Canada right now. Yeah. And mm-hmm. um, I, w- living here in the United States, I, I know we, we are pretty close to each other and we we get cross national news, etc. I watch a Canadian broadcasting every so often, etc. But there is a certain cancer that has evolved here in the United States. I don't think you guys have ever seen it in Canada. Uh, enlighten me if I'm if I'm wrong. I don't think we've seen it in most countries in the Western world. Well, I would disagree with you there. I think. Thank you. I think that America is certainly can be seen as the crucible of it right now, and maybe mm-hmm. the most at stake. I mean, going into the twenty twenty four election, democracy is at stake. I mean. As a as a Canadian uh, growing up, and I was, was around American influences all my life. My father worked for an American corporation, you know, American news uh, coming across from Buffalo all the time. The thought that democracy is on the ballot in America in 2024 is is astounding. But it's, it has come into Canada. Um, the uh, it has come into to the UK. Look what happened in Brexit. Right. Um, you know, where, you know, it was, uh, you know, the the yes side and the no side there were, were passing lines back and forth to, to manipulate people. Um, so, no, it's not. Um, I mean, so in other words, you're telling me it's much more uh, it's much more prevalent than I would see it living in this morass here in the United States. It just seems like it's all encompassing from your research. I think you're telling me that, no, you're seeing this or you've seen this all over. It's all over the world. Absolutely all over the world. I mean, and the prop, one of the problems is you get from the theater of lies 
to the rule of lies. Mm -hmm. And that's what you've got in China and you've got in, in Russia and, and other areas where- Explain you know, the difference. I think that is a very good concept that you just gave there. The differences that you just pointed, the theater of law to rule of lies. Well, we, we live in a theater of lies today. And that is that so much of what we see is, is a lie or misinformation and is produced to manipulate us. But when you get into the rule of lies, that means you, if you challenge the lies, you go to jail. And that's what happens in China. That's what happens in Russia. In, in Russia, for example, with the Ukraine invasion, the war in Ukraine, um, you know, Putin passed a law that said you couldn't use the term war. War, yes, I remember okay. that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, in 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 China, um, the first doctor that found COVID nineteen was put in jail because mm -hmm. he, he talked about it. That's what I call the rule of lies. Okay. So when literally you go from okay, we're being influenced by lies, which is where we are now, to saying no, no, this is the truth. This is what you, what you say. And if you don't say that, you go to jail. That's the rule of lies. Now, interestingly, uh, like, like you said, you're, you're looking in from Canada to the United States. And, and I think you just said, and I want to go back to the tenet of your book in a second, mm -hmm. but I, I want to get this straight. You've seen this migration of this excessive amount of lies and misinformation mm -hmm. starting to migrate across the, the border as well? Absolutely. Absolutely. The uh, um, and it's on both sides of, you know, use an American term, both sides of the aisle, liberals, conservatives, Republicans, Democrats. Um, you know, there's either complete baffle gab. I mean, and George Orwell talked about this, you know, mm -hmm. 60 years ago with politics in the English language, how, you know, political language is designed to manipulate because it says things that don't mean anything. You know, I can say I'm fighting for democracy. Well, what does that mean? Because democracy means different things to different people. Mm -hmm. um, that's part of the problem with, with misinformation and lies. That sometimes it's just not a lie, but it's using words that mean one thing to me, mean another thing to you. Um, but you think I mean what you what you want me to believe. Um, that's that's part of the problem that we're dealing with. Is that uh, here we've got a, a, a sort of our, our opposition or prime minister in, in waiting. He may, may feel he is, you know, calls Canada broken. Mm -hmm. Yet every poll, every every survey, every study shows Canada among the one, two, three or fourth uh, best country in the world. Right. Well, if we're broken, we're doing pretty well. Are there things wrong that needs to be fixed? Of course. But. That's what lies and misinformation do. They take something and they, I call it, you know, it's, it's like, this is, this is how hyperbole works, right? I say something's broken. I say things and if they're broken, they're either broken or fixed. That's binary thinking. And that's what we get a lot of now, a lot more of. And we saw it in COVID-19. We had our own uh, trucker convoy go across the country and, and surround the, uh, our parliament hill for three weeks. I remember and that. Yeah, yeah, that was that was worldwide news. Um, you know, based on misinformation of COVID, um, you know, based on misinformation of even how our political system works. They wanted our governor general to throw the prime minister out, um, which um, she actually has no power to do. <laughs> to do. Um, no, there's no legislative power in the world like that. So for, for, for in, in Canada. Um, so lots of lies and misinformation. And a lot of it comes down to, again, it's a signal that you're being lied to or very least manipulated when somebody presents you with binary options. This is right. This is wrong. This is left. This is right. This is um, vaccines are bad. Vaccines are good. Like mm -hmm. that. It, we need to get into more of understanding and debate and be able to debate on nuances on, on in the gray area. And now with even with I say it's, it's on both sides of, of a call this left right thinking binary is on the left, if you bring something up, you get into cancel culture. Oh, you can't talk about that. So they, you know, you get you get canceled. On the right, you get uh, ostracized and and beat up and doxed, and all sorts of terrible things can happen if you dare to to to, to ask the question. To ask the question, it's like I kind of feel like we live in a world where there's a a matriarch or a patriarch sitting at the head of our our family dinner table. I Actually, and, I think there is. Yeah, Actually, yeah. I think there is. But before I get into that, yeah. because I want to explore these yeah. things with you. Okay. Yeah. Um, but before we get into that, I, I want to get some of the context of your writing. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. Um, because a lot of how you're, the, the things that you're talking about, it sounds very American. And uh, in following both Canadian and American news, I wonder about the, um, let's say the symmetry. In other words, it is it is really really bad here the cancel culture the ostracization the doxing i mean it's very very bad here i haven't seen that at least reported in canada so i'm i guess i'm asking if is your book let's say mostly uh for this major audience here in america which i think suffers at this point in our history uh most of that problem well, I go back to the fact that America doesn't suffer most of this problem. It okay. is everywhere. Uh, I, I cite Canadian examples in the book. I cite American examples, British, Australian, Chinese, Russian, um, Japanese. Um, there, there are this, this issue is around the world. Um, you know, let, let's not forget that in, you know, 1944, Japanese people died yeah. for their emperor. Right. Because right. they believed he was a god. Right. right. Correct. Yes. So that that's how we got kamikazes and everything that, else. Right. Okay. That's a belief in a lie. Very true. The, right. Absolute. Where they cost millions of lives. Right. So it's not an American problem. I think Americans have gotten better at it. Mm -hmm. like they've, it there's a, a, you know, a line repeated in the book that simply says lies work. And when people think there's a conspiracy theory of people getting together and doing plans, they go, no, they just know that lies work. And in, in the business world and marketing and communications, if something works, you repeat it. Why invent, why invent something new? Why, if, if, if lies are more effective than truth to get people to persuade, to do what you want them to do. Why is that? Well, the, the, the key that I found is that I put lies and facts in the same bucket. I call them proof points, okay? Because they play on our biases. They play on what I call emotional resonance. So if the speaker, whether it's me or a, or a presidential candidate or a business person is talking, and that what they're talking about resonate with, res, resonates with you emotionally. The, the proof points you use, whether it's lies or misinformation or facts, that it simply confirms the decision you've already made. That's there you go. Key is that we don't use facts to inform us. We use facts and facts and lies to confirm what we already believe. Now, I, I, I want to postulate something. Have you ever heard of the Powell memo? Yes. Is that the, um, it's, it, it's, well, a, it's a memorandum written in, in the, in the 1960s by American justice, uh, American. I think he was, uh, the lawyer for the chamber of commerce mm -hmm. here in America. And he eventually was as, as ascended to the Supreme court as a Supreme court justice. Mm -hmm. But the idea behind this memo was that progressives were taken, uh, taken hold in America. You know, people were getting smarter, mm -hmm. uh, wondering, uh, why, why the business world could have so much power based on what, you know, the average American citizen does. And the idea was that the, the schools, the, the, the schools, the institutions had to be infiltrated to make sure that we didn't turn against business in effect. So it, it was a, it, it's a, it was a pretty long letter that pretty much got implemented in the United States, the formation of the Heritage Foundation, the Cato Institute, and a lot of these other think tanks that give plausibility to what I think you would justifiably call lies. And, and, and I guess what I'm saying, it seemed to have come from a, you asked why the lies, or I asked why the lies, it seemed to have always come from the corporate perspective in other words to use our intrinsic vulnerabilities and otherwise to make their points your your thoughts on that well it's it's true i mean in the business world we simply call it market research <laughs> <laughs> the, you know what, what what are the points that are going to engage people and my, my most simple example is if i am selling home alarm systems mm -hmm. i think i'm going to talk a lot about rising crime rates 
Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Okay. I mean, you nailed That's, it. You nailed okay. it. Yeah. So and uh, and the rising in your neighborhood, you know, so if if I'm living in Toronto and I'm trying to sell them in Toronto, I'm going to talk about Toronto statistics going up and uh, or things that look like Toronto that maybe maybe aren't true. And so you know, it's it's a long established pattern. There's no question. And I do say because it works and in a. a it's not so bad if somebody's selling home security systems. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not a bad thing to have a home security system. And if I right. get a little manipulated by thinking crime rates it's are okay. rising, it's 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 not the it's not a crime. Okay, but if I'm choosing my government, mm-hmm. you know, if I'm saying that, you know, I'm not a racist, mm-hmm. when in fact I do and say and have racist thoughts all the time mm-hmm. because if if i'm you know i mean it was only in 1965 that canada lost its last segregated school you oh know? really yes okay mm-hmm. okay uh, we had segregated lunch counters in halifax you know which was the center of the black population right in, i know in yeah canada. the migration um, yeah yeah it's so you know, as I say, we're, we don't we don't hold up our our hands so well. Our, our fight today in, in Canada is is the truth of Indigenous residential schools and the damage that they've done. The people that have the children that died in them and how many died and what's true and what's not true. And li- they're literally, you know, papers written on all sides of, of, of this argument. So we were still there, okay, based on the fact that race, which is also a lie. Okay. It's a, it's a, I, it's a human construct yes, that we, yes, we've created. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's a, and that goes back right back to the 1452 with, a, right. with, with, with an author who talked about how, you know, Africans, Africans were, you know, were basically degenerates right, and, and needed Christian help to save them. And, uh, and so by we, we enslaved them by making sure they were low on the totem pole they, they, and they needed our help. So we were doing them benefit, which you heard just last year from Ron DeSantis, that the slaves yes. learned skills. Yes. 500 years later, same message. It's okay. amazing. You know what? It is amazing. You, you brought I mean, I, I like the way you think. Because, you know, I have this term now called antiseptic slavery, my term, mm-hmm. antiseptic slavery, I like where, I said, where I said we're all that we're all slaves. Now, where it used to look like me, not looks like all of us. We're all slaves to the corporate state, corporate, the, the corporations. And I give in, in, in a couple of my books, I give the examples why I use that term. Now, um, I think in you pointing out and tying DeSantis to a 500 year construct, mm-hmm. it's powerful. And I think it's essential that we see these similarities, how it has migrated up the, the, the fault. And actually a book like yours that d- distributes an, an exact how lies happens. I think it, it, it is mm. it is what we need right now. So please. Mm. Uh, well, well, th- thank you for that, because the, 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 the book has has three parts to it. And mm-hmm. because it's called Theater of Lies, I called them acts. Act mm-hmm. one, act two, act three, like a three act play. And the first act was was actually what I started with, which was simply the question, why do we why do we believe lies Mm -hmm. and why do we repeat them to others? Those two fundamentals. And I go back to, you know, the the book starts with the first chapter is in the beginning, there were lies. Mm -hmm. And let's talk about, you know, Adam and Eve and the tree of knowledge. Don't eat from the fruit of the tree of knowledge Mm -hmm. and the serpent. You know, the devil saying, oh, you should have that apple, Eve. OK, if there was ever a clearer message that says, don't have knowledge, call something the tree of knowledge and say, don't eat from it. And then wow. if you do, you're cast out. Right. That was the first, you know, I would call it there's many, many lies mm-hmm. in the world beforehand, uh, but. That's the one that's written right in the Bible, sort of on page one after in the beginning. Then there is this. If you find knowledge. Right. If right. If you are curious. Right. Remember, remember the other cliche that's out there, which is actually a Shakespearean term. Curiosity killed the cat. Yes. 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 All, all these messages from the Bible to Shakespeare to others, which says, don't ask questions. That's dangerous. Okay. And it's, it's the people in power or people trying to acquire power. Well, now I've gone past. Don't even, not even just don't ask questions. 
if you ask questions, you're gone. You're out. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's the, that's the fracture you're seeing in between the Republicans and Democrats in general in the United States and the fracture you're seeing in the Republican Party between the MAGA uh, Republicans and the so-called traditional Republicans is how dare can you question these things? Um, but it's because, I mean, I even start with, with the fundamentals, what, which are some people call them benign lies, but I call them their, their, their teaching points. Mm-hmm. I just bring this up that. We're all brought up with this fact that, you know, the sun rises in the morning and it sets at night. Okay. We see it every day. It's on our phones. It's on the, web, the newscasts. Some, some comes up now, some comes down there. Yes. But that's not actually what happens. Right. It's a rotation of the earth. Yeah. <laughs> our position on the earth rotates away to, towards the sun and then away from it. Okay. Right. Now, I'm not saying that we need to stop saying sunrise and sunset. But it's a teachable moment to say what you are seeing may not be true Mm -hmm. because Mm -hmm. we get this all the time. Well, I saw it for myself. You know, I've been to Africa. I've seen, you know, the slums in Africa and they're, they're poor and they're starving and they're ignorant. And, you know, why would you want more of them here? I've seen it myself. Well, that's not necessarily true. Okay. Just because you've seen it doesn't make it true. Okay. So another thing that we do is we take a single point of data, even mm-hmm. something that I've seen or something that I've read, and we use what I call silly putty logic. Mm-hmm. We take that and we stretch it all the way across. Remember that silly putty toys? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. So we, we stretch it to fit a point. And, and part of that problem is, 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 is where our, our traditional media comes in. And that is because what traditional media does is they don't talk data. They talk news and news is something that's by definition rare. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's, you know, dog bites, man is not news. Man bites dog is news. Right. Now, just because a man bites a dog doesn't mean that all men bite dogs. Right. Right. And this is what happens in, in the, in the mainstream news. I, I saw it, you know, we saw it in the most, pertinent time was when I was writing the book was during the, when vaccines were coming out for COVID. And if there was any adverse reaction to a COVID vaccine, the news was right on it. Right. Okay. Now, and the people, oh, there's problems. Well, if you know, which, which I have worked in the, the healthcare industry and know the protocols is that if you take a vaccine, any drug for that matter, and have some sort of reaction that that is reported to, in your case, it would be the CDC and the, um, and your health authorities here, it would be health Canada and it's investigated. Mm -hmm. And even if you, you know, if you had a vaccine and you slipped on a piece of ice and fell on the ground, that would still be reported as an incident based on the vaccine. And then there'd be a complete report that say, no, the vaccine didn't have anything to do with this. So, but that's a long involved discussion that doesn't mean black and white somebody had a vaccine and had a, a bad reaction mm-hmm. um look what happened with uh, i'm a buffalo bills fan right I grew up in in uh, say the toronto area and cheering for the buffalo bills is in my dna well you remember last year when damar hamlin in that football game in cincinnati he got hit okay? right and his heart his stopped, heart stopped yeah. uh, twice uh eventually saved well while he's on the field you know everybody's got their their phone now. Okay. Everybody's got their computer and internet access mm-hmm. in their hand already starting to tweet. Oh, this is because he had a COVID vaccine. It was a myocardial infection in his heart that stopped it. We, and that was Mar- uh, uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene tweeted that. And the next mm-hmm. day on Tucker Carlson show, they had a doctor come on and talk all about this. Nothing to do with that. It was a what was discovered later because medical diagnosis takes mm-hmm. a little time, folks, that if you get hit and it happens with soccer players and football players, if you get hit with it in the helmet or a soccer ball right here in the heart, it can disrupt your heart rhythms mm-hmm. to the point of causing it. Just it's a it's a it's the it's the right force at the right time in the right place at the right and, beat. Yeah. At the right, right in between the beats, all this right. can happen. Mm-hmm. And so that's what actually happened. So, but meanwhile. 10 million retweets of Marjorie Taylor Greene's got to investigate the vaccines. That's what's caused this death. This this on field right during the right during the instant happened. So it's that, you know, it's city, silly putty logic. Um, 
Uh, hold on on the third one, because I want to expand on what you just said, which is yep. such an important mm-hmm. part when you brought the media in. I want to do a talk. I mentioned two incidences here in the United States, one uh, that that could have had implications, national implications on who win election, et cetera. The birther movement in America, it didn't matter where uh, it didn't matter where Obama was born, given that his American, his mother was an American. But the media ran away with the story, the the Trump story on birther in as much as all they needed to say his mother was a natural born American. It doesn't matter where he was born. He would be a natural born American. That would have been the end of the case. Instead, Mm -hmm. it moved on. The other thing is uh, when it comes to Canada and Medicare, uh, the the state of Medicare in, in Canada, Canada has compared to the United States great healthcare. Compared to the United States, uh, th- their biggest issue has always been, oh, well, in Canada, you wait longer for a hip replacement. Turns out here in the United States, uh, we have private healthcare, but given that it's all privatized and you have to move things around, you still have to wait a hell of a long time for most Americans to see a specialist. No different than, the, the, the than, let's say, actually mm-hmm. quite a bit worse because it costs you a lot more here in the United States. Just needed to do that interjection. Continue, please. Well, and it's, it's uh, and, you know, and, and Canada's taxes rates are higher. You know, uh, like, they're you know, comparable. Like, com- we're comparable. When you actually get down to how much money we end up in the end of the day, you, you have lower income tax rates in the United it, States. Some states have no income tax at all, et cetera. But guess what? They have higher sales taxes. Right. Um, and and you're, you're paying for it in other ways. And America has the, some of the highest costs of health care per capita in the yes. world. Yes. With the worst outcomes. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Uh, that uh, you know, and is, can, is, our, is our healthcare system perfect? Again, nothing's perfect, and that's we go back to this binary thinking: it's right or it's wrong, it's broken or it's fixed. Um, no, the 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 world moves forward in the gray. And how do we fix it? How do we make it better? And uh, that's what happens with lies and misinformation. Also, they close down thought. We won't go that way because that's bad. I, I, I hear it on listening on CNN and people talk about uh, Norway and the, the, the right wing commentators as well. They're socialists. We don't want to learn anything from them. Happiest people in the world every Happiest, year. And, and great, great health care. I mean, yeah. I, I ha- yeah. there's an American that I interviewed who moved over there mm-hmm. and he moved over there. His son uh, went skiing and broke his neck. Oh. Was t- it was uh, well, he's better. He's much yeah. improved, but it was because of the health care they had. He never had to worry about losing a job, never had to worry about going bankrupt. Mm-hmm. They took care of him. They took him to. I mean, we can do it uh, if we could get out of this theater of lies. Mm-hmm. If we can get out of the theater of lies. We would do well. Look, uh, it, I, 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 just, I remember when the, the Obamacare was coming in, I have to, have to yeah. say this, and they were talking about it and having discussions. And I'm saying Americans are protesting against going bankrupt for health care. Right. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's I'm amazing, going, isn't it? I, yes. I, um, and the fundamental thought that, well, in order you get health care paid for if you have a job. Right. It's crazy. Well, so it's linked to a job. Well, Why? <laughs> Why do exactly. I have, to have a job to get healthcare? Um, um, let's, let, let's, yeah. Listen, let me let me just let me let me just say this. I mean, uh, it is great to have somebody from outside of the country uh, who's under these different programs be able to say this. But you know, I've been having so much fun talking to you that we have actually let time go by. So here's what I'm going to ask you, Ted. First of all, I'm going to ask you to. Tell me whatever you want that I should have asked you that I didn't about your book, about anything so that we can close out. But more importantly, uh, tell me what you see as a solution to try to get around this theater of lies, if you will. Okay. Well, using the theater of lies metaphor, the lie producers are not going to stop. Mm-hmm. It works. Oh, it has worked for hundreds of years. And it's only getting more so. So the solution is to become a better audience. Mm-hmm. Okay. A more critical audience. Mm-hmm. The, 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 the fundamental way to take care of this is to pause, take a step back and be curious. Okay. Ask the question, why are they telling me this? What are their motivations? Okay. It's, it's what I see in the United States that I wrote about in, in Newsweek about that, you know, 
there is a, a conservative movement in in the in the states in the in the United States, the national conservatives or common good conservatives or Christian conservatives that are embracing Donald Trump's lies, not because they believe him, but because he will set the ground for them to have their conservative country or independent states, whatever it ends up it ends up being, putting democracy back on the table. That people. We've, you've, you've got to spend time to understand not just that people are lying to you, but understand the why of the lies, because they're done with purpose. And once you get into the, their, their motivations, you can sort of check that emotional resonance pack for just a bit. The, um, what I ask people to do, I said it's very easy and yet very hard. Number one is park your biases, park your ideologies, to take them and just park them, put them to the side. Say, don't worry, they're safe, they're still there, they're not running away, you can have them back whenever you want. But just for a second, park them. Okay, ask yourself the question, what if the other side is right? What do I have to know that maybe the other side of this argument has that I don't know? Okay, Put this, take that, park that for a second, take that pause and be curious. Because between your curiosity and your imagination and that kind of diligence, you become a better audience member. And then you have what I call the the, the, the third C. First of all, was you got to care that you're being lied to. Secondly, you got to be curious. And finally, you have to have the courage to stand up and say, I don't think it's that way because you're going to get hit hard back. But courage is important. So that, that's the, you know, in a, in a in a couple sentences, what the book is about is to help people give you the tools, both as individuals, organizations, because like, there's companies and organizations that are, are spreading lies and misinformation, misinformation. They don't even know it because they believe the lies they're telling. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'll go back. Don't, I don't know how much time I got left, but the, uh, the chocolate industry. Every chocolate bar you you buy now at a mainstream chocolate says like cocoa for good or sustainable cocoa, you know, all these programs. Well, guess what? The, the people who are growing the cocoa make three dollars a day. Mm -hmm. They can't afford to buy rice from the, what they sell the cocoa for to feed their families. So, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, you know, Nestle and Around Tree and Mars. It's not sustainable. OK. That's not you're 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 fooling yourself or you're fooling them. Now they've got a thing called fair trade cocoa, which is higher price, et cetera. We go, well, that's one percent of the market. But so it's that's an area where I go, that's a problem. They need to tell people that our fair our sustainable cocoa programs aren't working. We need you to help us, consumer, and let's work together to make sure the the uh, folks in Guinea who are growing our, our our cocoa can have a good life and 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 educate their children. I know. The, the, the point of the matter is, is you've got to park your biases. Corporations have to look to themselves and say, what misinformation are we putting out there? Let's look at ourselves. And as a society, we have to raise a generation of curious children who are encouraged to have lifelong learning. So our school system is set up to create workers, not create thinkers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But here's the problem. I go back just to people who say, well, no, we have to create these workers. When the child going into kindergarten today comes out of high school or, you know, a four-year college, none of us know what the labor environment is going to be and the workforce needs are going to be 13, 15, 16 years from now. None of us know. Let's just go back 16 years. The, right. the, the, between the internet and social media and, right. and digital media and, and computer technology, we weren't training our kids then to, to do that. You need to train thinkers who are able to adapt to, into these new environments. So that's, that's important. We can't, we, if you're trying to raise workers, you can't do it the way you're doing it. You Got to raise thinkers and thinkers. Okay, let's go back to that tree of knowledge. Right. That's what the authority doesn't want. Exactly Donald Trump doesn't want right. people to think. Okay? Exactly. exactly. And doesn't want doesn't want to have Ron DeSantis, no debates on critical race theory. Dumb title. Dumb, 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 dumb title. Whoever came up with critical race theory, it was obviously an academic, and then other mm -hmm. people took it on and, and used it. Come up with a better name. You know, it's like when the, the left took on the term woke. Mm -hmm. You know, good black term about being 
you know, black slang about being a, a black children, being, being aware of the way around, yeah. around police, right. be aware that they're going to treat you differently. But, you know, the left took it and made it their own. And then, of course, it was easy because since nobody knew what woke really means. We could stamp the meaning. Yeah, We could say, we could stamp the meaning and say, I'm anti-woke. Mm-hmm. Now mm-hmm. it's woke, anti-woke, and nobody knows what any of it means. <laughs> okay. Yeah. We get back into labels rather than reality. So that's what education could do. Curiosity can do. Um, and I think the last thing is, is if, if somebody ever gives you a term, a word that you don't understand, that you have to look up. First of all, it's good. You're looking it up. You're curious. Yeah. Like somebody talked about illiberalism and, uh, you know, and the term common sense conservatism. I have to look these things up because I, mm-hmm. I don't talk with my friends and my associates and my colleagues, like my that. clients, yeah. these terms. If I've got to go look it up, somebody's trying to get something by me. <laughs> okay. Sure. And the use of languages is, is a very powerful tool to manipulate people. Well, that's my business. Though I believe... I'm trying to persuade people for good mm-hmm. and for them to be independent thinkers, not ideological on either side. Ideal ideology is a killer of curiosity. And um, that's why I promote this message to all sides of the argument. Ted Griffith, author of Theater of Lies. Thank you so kindly for having been on politics and right. Appreciate it. I look forward to hearing the broadcast. Man, I tell you, I could have spoken to that guy for forever. I mean, I, the conversation just kept going. I, you know, um, I wanted to finish listening to the Supreme Court. So after we got through the interview, we had a little back and forth for a while. And I said, ah, I got to go to go check this other stuff out, you know. Uh, so I had to I kind of cut it off to, to get that done. But yeah. How do we feel about Tucker Carlson in Russia? I will echo what Nancy Pelosi said. Uh, he is a he is a Putin's useful idiot. Uh, so you know, let's see how that goes. Uh, in fact, there there's people that came on to the program. I think it was I don't remember which one of the, the MSNBC programs last night that uh, this person who speaks Russian said that they pretty much make a fool of him on Russian TV in Russian. You know, so while he may think that it's all great that, oh, they're loving on him, they look at him as exactly that, a useful idiot. Uh, So that's what he is. Anyway, folks, I got one more video to show. We are at 46, 47. So let me go ahead and do that now. It's about Nikki Haley. And then I'll be right back with you guys. All right. All right. Nikki Haley came out strong against Donald Trump as she finally started to up the ante. Well, she's been doing it now for a couple of weeks now, right? Uh, here, she she hits Biden a bit. But if you t- really listen to the undertones, this is pretty damn tough on Donald Trump and pretty much as tough as you can get. And it probably got under his skin. Check this out. We'll take it on the other side. Let's look at this, not from the context of him personally. Let's look at this as a leader and a president. You have 70 percent of Americans who have said they don't want Joe Biden or Donald Trump. Why are we doing this? Why are we allowing ourselves to have two 80 year olds who can't serve eight years, who both are diminished, whether it's in their character or in their mental capacity? Why are we doing this? We deserve better. America deserves better. I voted for Donald Trump twice. I was proud to serve America in his administration, but he is not the right person to lead us going forward. That's a fact. And I think you look at these court cases, you see how he's acting. All you had to do was see how he acted after I got 43 percent of the vote in New Hampshire. He was upset because he thought I was going to be down 25 percent. He threw a temper tantrum. Why? Because he wasn't controlling the situation. But he never talked about the American people. He never talked about the out of control spending and inflation. He never talked about how we were going to get kids reading again. He never talked about the border and the lawlessness. He never talked about the wars that were happening. He just talked about himself. That's the problem. This isn't about Donald Trump. This is about where we go in America. And I say this to Republicans everywhere, is that, look, we know for a fact, if he goes up in a general election, we will have a female president of the United States. 
it will either be me or it will be Kamala Harris. But if Donald Trump is named the nominee, Joe Biden will win and Kamala Harris will become president. That is a fact. Every one of those polls, your poll, CNN, shows that Donald Trump barely is within the margin of error. I defeat Biden by 13 points. You look at the two polls that came out before, Quinnipiac and another one. Donald Trump lost to Joe Biden by seven points. Okay. There's a reason Democrats want to run against Donald Trump. Now, look, since this uh, has occurred, Nikki Haley in, in, uh, in I think it's New, what, New Mexico has lost to none of the above. But I don't know if that really matters. I want to see what she does in South Carolina. I want to see if the numbers change with what's happening with Donald Trump and the other things that may occur. We'll see. I have a feeling that she could get some traction if, if Donald Trump takes a a hit this week when it returns about the immunity or rather if, if he goes to the Supreme court with the immunity thing and somehow they immediately come back and say, ah, we're not going to touch it because then he's going to trial. So Nikki Haley does right by just hanging in there. She probably should remain hanging in there because it's a good chance. Who knows? Things could change. And in that little piece, I said New Mexico. I think I really meant to say, I should have said Nevada. It was Nevada where it is that she had issues. Anyway, 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 let's see what... My peeps are saying here, uh, more than 170,000 calls to Texas Child Protection Hotline went unanswered from 2022 to 2023. Governor Abbott is peddling anti-immigrant hate and fixating on the border to distract from actual dangerous failures. He and Texas Republicans have produced in our state. Very, very true. Actually, that was in the News 4 San Antonio. Amazing, isn't it? Uh, Paul Fleming says they had uh, a show on 60 Minutes about how cocoa is being grown and sold and how the people live and how it's just a travesty. I guess that's a part of being a third party world, a a third party world. I mean, look at how we get all our products from China. Those people aren't rich and uh, billionaires are making more billions on their backs. I remember the piece that I did on billions, you know, so I mean, that is so true. But, you know, we don't care. We only talk about wanting equality and wanting to be concerned about humanity and our moral values. Nah, we don't really. We, we talk a lot, a good game. We don't live it. Lee Grant says Griffith is right about binary thinking. We operate in a gray area a lot of times. Yes, that's true. There are not just two sides to every issue. There are thousands. And you know what? In some things, there are. That's true. But uh, there are certain things that are black and white. If I have a ball in my hands and I let go of that ball, it's not going to fall up. It's not going to fall sideways. It's going to fall down if it's if there's no wind or any other thing to change the trajectory of that ball. There are certain things, again, that are black and white. If we have if we keep the economic system as we have it today, just based on math, eventually all the assets will transfer to the people at the top. Why? Because the income, the wealth of the people on the top, while it may be growing at seven, eight, nine percent, the wealth of those are at the bottom are either going negative or not growing at all. The mathematical result of that is the transfer of wealth to the top. That's capitalism. The capitalist class income or wealth grows at a faster rate then the lower lower pieces and the economy, the growth of the economy do very little to counteract that. So the mathematical reality is it just can't. Again, this we are in an unsustainable system where all the wealth mathematically will be transferred up the ladder. And as we have tax cuts and all these other things that further uh, transfer the wealth, it's an inevitable conclusion. All right. Justin, special counsel Robert Hur has released his team report on the investigation into the mishandling of Obama era classified documents at two locations connected to President Joe Biden. CNN is going through the document now and we'll post update. The investigation found Biden willfully retain and disclose classified military and national security information, but he will not face Senate charges in the report. Hur noted that 
Biden cooperated with the investigation and returned the classified documents once they were discovered, noting the significant differences between the case and the one against President Donald Trump, who was charged last year in retaliation to his uh, handling of classified documents after the left after he left the White House. You know, Donald Trump is going to tee on to things like uh, the, the, that report also said Biden was old, uh, old and forgetful. And to some extent, uh, he, if he were to take into trial, he would be a sympathetic figure. Ta -da -ta 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 that is a more damaging part of that report, as I can see. It makes it makes him look like a forgetful old man. That's what the report look. And that's what uh, is going to be, t you know, the right wing is going to go berserk about that. It's all the ads are already written for that. That said, let Donald Trump keep bringing that up because it allows us to contrast all those classified documents in the bathroom, all those classified documents on the floor. You know, again, uh, I wonder which one is worse. Now, that said, I think the report is damaging, especially the part that talks about Biden's memory and forget uh, forgetfulness or however it is that they 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 that cloaked it. I, I didn't like that. I kind of believe that it is clear it was written by Donald Trump's appointee. And since the, the Biden administration didn't remove the appointee, that's what you get. Yep. White House lawyer is fighting that 307 pages and you had to add person opinion. Yep. Uh, Bruce Pollard, they will lose the older people's vote. You know. Um, you know, I tell you what always concerned me, Bruce. I don't see how old people had ever been voting for Republicans when they have always been damaged by Republicans. It drives me crazy. But then again, women vote. Some women vote for Republicans. And these are people who take their rights away and treat them like less than. So, you know, what's the answer? So what I'm pegging on is what we do here. And that is keep on informing, educating, and so forth. When I bring guys like Ted Griffith, one of the reasons I bring him is so that we can self-analyze. So that we can self-analyze. And that's what we do. I guess we have our spammer once again. I, You know, when people put messages like this into live feeds, I don't know why they do it. Because it doesn't work. And nobody looks at it, you know. Nobody really looks at it. All right, let's see if I, I missed anything here. Oops, I messed up referring to Tom C instead of Mike Cisak when I posted Eric H. Why do you, Tom C, Lee G, Tom C? <laughs> oh, E2247, you're funny, my guy. I apologize to you, Tom C. I didn't see Tom C in the house. Did I not? Did I miss Tom C being here? I didn't see Tom C in the house. And, you know, I like to make sure and salute everybody. Anyway, we're at the end of the show, folks. Um. I really want to thank you for being here. And you know what I do at the end of every show? I try to get folks to subscribe. So if any of you are new here that have yet to subscribe, please consider becoming a part of our PDR Posse. There are many ways to join our PDR Posse, and it starts by going to support, or rather, politicsandright.com slash support. I repeat, politicsandright. Hey, Tom C. is here. There you go, Tom. I see you. Go to politics. I didn't get a limericks. You know, I love you. I love my limericks, man. Bruce Pollard says women need to rise up and take their place in the world. I, I agree. And I, I'm pretty sure Bridge MCP would would shout from the sky and say that I think women at this point in time is what we need. Right. But anyway, um, please visit politicsandright.com slash support politicsandright.com slash support and find one of the many ways we have to support the program. And how, how are those many ways? I'm going to throw that onto the screen since I have the screen here. Those are the different methods that you can use to support us. You can support us by Patreon, by uh, subscribing to our YouTube channel, by subscribing to Substack, shop at our store, buy our books, everything. It's all right there. Um, but anyway, folks, uh, please support the show the best that you can. You can also go ahead and subscribe to our newsletter. It is free. But I'm asking you to please, I went ahead and um, I put up the, 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 the shipping version of our new book uh, on, on Substack. It's called, uh, <laughs> you know, it's, it's amazing when you have all these things in your mind. It's like, okay, which book am I talking about? 
I'm talking about tribulations of an Afro-Caribbean, Afro-Latino Caribbean man. Tribulations of an Afro-Latino Caribbean man. My, that's myself. Uh, please take a look at it. Though anybody who is a paid subscriber of our newsletter can read the book right there online. And how do you become a paid subscriber of our newsletter? It's politicsandright.com slash newsletter. And again, it's easy, right? It's, it, it's like buying Politics and Right a coffee a month. Hey, I know we can do that. If we get a thousand people doing that, I can get some help in here, right? But we need to get a lot of people. We're only at about 60 something, 70 people. I think, I think we went, we, we are at about 61 or so actually is what we're at. Uh, we need to get the reality is over a thousand, but, uh, to be really, really self-sustaining. But um, anyway, so please go ahead and subscribe to our newsletter if you are able to, politicsandright.com slash newsletter. But he says, what's the difference with the newsletter, Egberto Willis? Oh, the newsletter is just the, uh, the newsletter that comes out every morning at five in the morning. And during the week, I may add about four or five different articles that I post. And like I said, it's a free newsletter. I just ask people out of the goodness of their heart to say, well, there's this free thing. I'm going to subsidize a lot of the other people who are reading this newsletter for free. So I ask people it's, it, to, you know, go ahead and uh, it's free for everybody. But again, if you every now and then I'll also have perks uh, bridge with the newsletter. I may, may put certain things under lock and key just to kind of give folks like, hey, check this out. If you're a paid subscriber, you get this. But you know how I think. I want everybody to have everything. But uh, I ask those who are able to to subscribe to the newsletter, politicsandright.com slash newsletter. And I, when you go to that, it'll give you the option to subscribe. Um, tell tell p- your friends, please subscribe to this newsletter. It's We're out there doing good to society. Or you can become, you can subscribe to our Patreon or Substack, all, all these other ways that you can support us. Anyway, I got to get out of here. My name is Egberto Willis. This is Politics and Right. And you guys know how I end this baby. I am what? Up. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to, trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.